Good morning, everybody. Good early morning if you're on the West Coast. This is Swan with Black Box Stocks. I've got Seven Star Mike with me as well. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. And uh, here in a little bit, Hell's Bells is also going to join us. He had an obligation this morning, but he will be joining hopefully later today. So we just want to first off say thank you, thank you, thank you for taking the time to be with us this morning on this day off from the market but yet there's no day is off when it comes to learning and education. So we appreciate your time and uh, we look forward to being with you guys today. So here's what we're gonna do. This will be a very, it's gonna be laid back. Um, so we're gonna go through a little bit of a discussion this morning on option flow. What is option flow? Um, why, do, why is option flow important to us? What is the type of option flow that we look for? What is the option flow that we ignore? Um, what is a bid versus ask? What's a sweep? What's a block? All these questions that people may wonder. I, I see this option flow, but I have no idea what it means. So we're going to go over all of that. We will have time for Q&A. Now, I will say this. We have probably over 500 people with us this morning. Um, so we will see how many of the questions we get through, but we will get through as many as we can. So if you have questions, please type them out in the uh, go to webinar user interface there. There's a place there for questions and we will get to them as we uh, come across them so again thank you um, we will go ahead and get started one thing that we always like to start these classes off with is just some basic um, instructions on trading in general okay so maybe not just specifically in options trading but as many of you know options mafia on twitter uh, bb2 in uh, black box and then also He's, he's also known as $100 Charlie in Discord, all three of the same good person. Um, he likes to re reference something that we call uh, puppy trading. So we want to avoid puppy trading. So let's quickly just talk about puppy trading. Um, this is a, a BB2 quote, a puppy goes outside, pees on every bush, car tire, mailbox, and tree. Don't trade like a puppy. Now, that's important, especially when it comes to options trading, because options flow comes at us hard and fast all day long line after line after line after line and we get asked how many times a day mike uh 15 20 times a day is this good flow is this good flow <laughs> so what number we do, one question it is it is the number one question is this good flow to follow is this this must be good flow um those are puppy traders okay they're going out they're trying to trade on every piece of flow that comes in every chart that pops up uh, don't be don't trade like a puppy all right we want that old seasoned uh adult dog that knows exactly what it wants to do when it goes outside knows exactly where it's going to go um, has a plan in in place that's the type of trader we want to be and option flow can do that for us but we have to have patience okay and that takes us to our next slide patience um, some call it patience we call it pay with a dollar sign patience um, another quote from from Charlie. So reason we say it takes patience is because again, we see all of this flow come in and we know we're traders, right? People we're day traders. People want to get in, they want to, we want to be in trades. I and mean, that's what it comes down to. We want to have our money at work. The problem is, is that if we don't have patience, we're going to get into bad trades. And you've heard many options traders say we make our money on the entry, not the exit. And that is so true option flow helps us though see those entries uh, helps us see where big money's going uh, what they're interested in why are they buying that strike why are they buying that expiration and we're going to go over some nice examples today to show everybody what we look for uh, when it comes to options flow and it takes patience well um, last year we did a little trial with some groups we brought in new traders into a special room the bbs we called the black box anarchy 99 is what we called it and it was fun, wasn't it, Mike? We we took in new traders and we we taught them option flow for that week. And some weeks it was just the option flow was just banging. I mean, we just put out trade after trade. And it was like this is awesome. Um, then some weeks it was kind of painful, right, Mike? <laughs> I mean, it was there wasn't hardly any good option flow out there, and that's what happens with option flow. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Uh, so it definitely takes patience. But number one overall is 
when it comes to any sort of trading, whether you're trading options or commons, when it comes to any sort of trading, risk is the number one priority, okay? We have to be able to manage our risk. And uh, Tim BB2 puts out this quote here. Uh, he says, I have a better chance of seeing an alien come down and you know do something to a Yeti in my backyard while National, Graphic is, National Geographic is filming than I do of winning by averaging down three or four times in a losing trade. So that's just a mental picture for you. You can keep it or not, <laughs> but tr that is the case. We see so many traders get into trades, whether it's options or commons. We're talking mainly option trading today and, and, and mainly option flow. They get into a trade that has months of time on it, and Mike's going to talk more about this here in a little bit, but they have, it has months of time on it, and they're looking at the one-minute chart, and they're seeing it drop, and they're seeing it go down slightly. They're down 5%, down 10%, and they're freaking out, even though it has six months on the trade. Um, if that's the case, and they're concerned, and we get this question constantly, oh, what are, you, are you guys still in this? Are you still in this? That tells us one thing about what you did on that trade, and what is that, Mike? Improper sizing. Improper sizing. That's it. Exactly. They went in too heavy, and that red that they're seeing is making them panic. Manage that risk, right? Don't average down. Manage the risk, and uh, it'll make trading a whole lot less stressful. And who? And that's really what we're all striving for, right? Some low stress uh, trading. Then, lastly, hopium. Says, do you have a plan or are you trading on hope? Hopium is not a straight train strategy, nor is it a good way to trade without emotions. Trade smart, stay calm, stay focused, be patient, okay? And protect your profits. So hopium is something that just gets everybody into trouble from time to time, myself included. Takes seasoned traders, have to fight it constantly. Um, we get into a trade and okay, maybe we were wrong. Maybe we followed some flow. And maybe the flow that we followed, that person was wrong. Uh, we have to acknowledge that. And if that's the case, manage that risk and we cut it and we move on. Um, staying in a trade, hoping, hoping, hoping that it's gonna go up. It's gonna go back. It's gonna, it's gonna turn around, right? It can't drop anymore. Tomorrow's the day. It's gonna reverse. It's gonna reverse. And eventually we, you know, that contract just continues to fall. So with that being said, stay focused on what we're gonna talk about today. What we're trying to show you guys today is high probability option flow. What we're looking for, why it's essential to, to have that eye to be able to read flow. That's why the theme to this webinar was how to read flow properly, because it is truly reading it. Uh, it's like reading a book. Um, if you're not reading it correctly, you could be seeing a story that's not there. And ultimately, that's going to cost you money. If, if you think this person is long in a position and actually that's not the case at all based off of the flow, all right? So Mike, are you ready for me to hand this over to you? Let's do it. All right, I'm gonna hand this over to him. He's got some things he's gonna go over. If you guys have questions, type them in, we'll get them answered. Um, let's see here. All right, I think I sent it to you. Yep, we see your file folder opened up there. There we go. Let's switch it over to this one then. How about that? That's it. Now we got black box. All right. So let's start with basically what flow is. If you guys have listened to the Thursday class that I do every week, you'll hear me say this quite a bit. We're watching the hedge funds trade live. Now, the only way we can get these trades quicker than what we actually do through black box would be to be in the trading room with these hedge funds when they say, okay, we're going to open this trade. So there's no quicker way to get this data. It's a real-time scanner on my screen. Now I'm West Coast, so if, you're, if your times don't match up with my screen, that's because you're in a different time zone. So this ALLY right here at 12.59 and 53 seconds, at 12.59 and 53 seconds, someone put this trade for $12,000. They, they opened that position at that exact moment. So when I say we're watching the hedge funds trade live, as this data comes through, these are actually executed on the exchange at this exact moment that the timestamp shows on the scanner. So we really are watching people trade live. 
as their trades execute on the exchange, it shows up on our scanner. So we can use that information to kind of find the patterns that these big money traders are placing their trades with. And we found a certain pattern that when the criteria is met, we call them high probability trades. That's what options flow really is, is we're watching for these big money traders to see how they position themselves in the options market. Now, sometimes people will say, let's say you get news on a stock and maybe there's volume on a particular ticker and then six minutes later a headline comes out and, and it spikes. Someone says, oh, someone always knew, right? They knew information before the rest of us. Well, that's a good thing if we have access to the exchanges. A lot of times what we'll see is maybe some big options flow and we scratch our heads and we go, why are they hitting that ticker? Huh? wonder what's going on. And then a headline comes out maybe 30 minutes later, or even sometimes it's a minute and a half later. And we go, oh, that's why someone knew that was going to come out. The ticker spiked and they were already positioned with their options flow. That's what we're doing. We're watching to see how these big money traders position themselves. And if they have information that you and I don't have access to, that's okay. As long as we see what they're doing with that information. And this middle portion of the screen here shows us exactly that. So we really are watching these, all these trades here. As they come across the exchange and fill on the exchange, they're showing up here. So these aren't trade ideas. So this one right here for AMD, this isn't someone that says, huh, I think AMD might go up from 136 to where it is to 146. It's not an idea that's in their head. It's an actual trade that they place. So we've all hung out with people that said, oh, yeah, by next year, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that or I'm going to buy this and go here and travel and do this. And then, you know, six months later, they've never done anything. Right. It's all talk. Well, options flow isn't talk. It's not a trade idea. It's someone placing their money behind their thesis. So that's really what we're doing. We're watching these hedge funds trade live. Now, if you don't know what this information is telling you here, you're going to get into trouble. We have access to some amazing data, but if you don't understand it, or if you don't know how to interpret it, you're going to get into trouble. I get DMs throughout the day from people that say, hey, this looks like a pretty good trade. Can you tell me what you think? And within a split second, I can say, absolutely not. That's garbage. And they say, well, I saw it because of this, this, and this. So I'm going to give you guys a checklist sometime today where it's going to show you exactly what I look for for high probability trades. So sometimes you might hear me call it top tier flow, the, the best of the best. And I can pull in when Swan takes over the screen, I'll find it on my system. I've got a spreadsheet of all the trades that we sent out to the app. Now the spreadsheet is going to show you that historically, when you select the best of the best flow, you have a very high success rate. Now you can go online and you can see stuff about traders being, you know, 50% correct. Out of every 10 trades they make, five are profitable, five are losing. And they can still be profitable overall with the proper risk reward. So if you can be a profitable trader with 50% of your trades generating a profit, how do you think you can do when 85% of your trades are generating a profit? Now some people say, well, 85%, that's a bit ridiculous. And I get a lot of pushback on Twitter and social media when I put stats out. So I actually don't like putting stats out anymore, but I'll show you guys the spreadsheet. When we handpick the flow, and I'm not talking about the algo generated alerts, I ignore those. I'm talking about the handpicked flow. This is the type of flow that I'm looking for. When we take those trades, depending on what statistic you wanna use as profitable trade, anywhere from 80% plus they're generating a profit. Now, in the chart that we've seen, we're still seeing that 80% plus rate. The difference is we're not seeing as many trades. So people ask all the time, hey, we're in a choppy market, is flow still gonna work? Yes, it's still gonna work. We're just, instead of having 15 trades in a week, we might have three or four. Instead of three or four, we might have one. So it's still working. It's just not going to be as many of them. And that's a sign for us. And think about that. The big money traders, these, these guys have hundreds of millions of dollars at their disposal. If they're not willing to expose that money to the market, what does that tell you guys? Well, it should tell you that 
they're not comfortable taking on the risk of opening positions with their client's money. They're not exposing their client's money to the markets. So they're risk averse right now. So when we see less flow, that should tell you that the people that have research teams, the people that do this for a living, they're not comfortable putting their money into the market. Now, depending on the way you trade, if you're a scalper, it doesn't matter. If you're a scalper and a day trader, you can make money every single day of the week. If you're looking for these longer term swings, there's just less of them right now because the market is in this chop fest. So let's take a look at some of this data here. I'm not gonna go through the entire flow class because that is uh, about an hour and a half on its own from start to finish, but I'm gonna pull up a few things here. I want you guys to understand what we're looking at. So on your screen, this is one of the slides from the flow class. And that might be a little hard to see. So let's actually go right from the scanner here. And let's find one that's easy to read. This DISCA at the top here, this white line of flow. This is basically telling us that at 12.59 and 29 seconds, the contract was DISCA, 121 expiration, $35 calls. That's the contract that was traded. The spot price here, up top you can see it says spot, 3121. That means that this was trading at 31.21 when they bought a $35 call. So we're using the spot price here to determine how far in the money or out of the money these contracts are. So DISCA was trading at 31.21 and they bought a $35 call. So we're gonna look at that and say that's roughly, was it $3.79 out of the money for a contract that expires 121. And we're gonna use that information to decide if we're gonna follow that or if that meets the criteria that we're looking for. This here, details. This is really important here because this is telling us a lot of information. This is telling us that they bought 648 contracts. They paid 25 cents for each of those contracts and the A over here is telling me that when they paid 25 cents, that was the act. Now, I don't know without looking at the options chain, but let's just assume the spread was 20 by 25. This system is telling me that they paid 25, and when they did, 25 cents was the ask. That's what that A is standing for. So this is gonna tell me whether these are opening or closing positions, and I'll get into that a little bit more in a second. This is telling me that it was a sweep transaction. You can see there's sweeps and blocks. A lot of people ask what the difference is and why we ignore blocks. So here's the quick explanation. Sweeps and blocks are both large institutional orders. The difference is a block is filled on a single exchange, whereas a sweep takes multiple exchanges to fill the order. You'll hear us say quite a bit, we ignore solo blocks. And that also means we ignore, if you pull up a line of flow and you isolate that contract, and let's say it's three lines of flow, but all three lines of flow are blocks, we're going to ignore that as well. Now, that doesn't mean the trade won't make money. What it means is that it's not a high probability trade. I can find the crappiest flow on the system, follow it, and make money. But is there a high probability of that happening? No. So if you do that a lot, in the long run, you're going to lose money. So we don't want to look for just good flow or average flow. We want to find really good flow. Part of that equation is that there's going to be sweep activity involved in it. So let's use an example. I want a thousand contracts and I tell my broker, I don't want to pay more than $4. The broker is going to go out and look for a thousand contracts available at an exchange for $4. If they find them, they fill the order. If they don't, they won't fill the order. A sweep is going to say, I want a thousand contracts, go fill that order. So the broker goes out, they look at the exchange and let's say they find 250 contracts available they're gonna fill that 250 contracts, but I want 1,000, so they're gonna to go to another exchange and looking for 750 more. Let's say they find 500 there, they're gonna grab those 500 for me, but I'm still less than 1,000, so they're gonna to go to a third exchange looking for another 250 contracts to get me to the 1,000 that I want. So a sweep is basically urgent. A sweep is saying, I want these 1,000 contracts, go find them. A block would be, a, a, an order filling on just one exchange. So there has to be that full thousand contracts available on a single exchange. So a sweep is more urgent because the sweep is saying if they're not available on, on one exchange, go to every exchange you need to go to until my order is filled. So you'll hear us say we don't follow solo blocks. And again, if you pull up a line of flow and it's two blocks or three blocks, we don't follow that. 
Now, again, that doesn't mean the trade won't work out. What it means is it's not the high probability trades where we have a very good indication that if we put money into this, it's going to come back with more. As a full-time trader, I can't put money out into the market and just hope it makes more. This is what I do for a living. So I have to know that when I put money out there, there's a really good chance it's going to come back with more. So I want high probability trades. So we want to see these sweeps in here. The sweep is going to see urgency. You'll hear us say size, time, and urgency. Those are the three things we're looking for. So part of the urgent factor is going to be ask and above ask and sweeps. Okay, so sweeps and blocks. We get this question a lot. I'm actually going to pull up a graphic here. We'll see something like this, and I'll post this on social media, where sweep, 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 block. And these are good dollar amounts, 132, 139, 106, 242, but then the block is for $1.3 million. And people will say, well, wait a minute, you said we don't follow blocks. Well, here's the thing. If blocks and sweeps are mixed together, yes, we do need that block information. So this is where people kind of get confused a little bit. We don't follow blocks. We don't follow blocks if they're by themselves. We don't follow blocks if they're mixed with two or three block orders. If it's blocks and sweeps mixed together like this, that block information is important information. That block trade we do take into account. So it's really important to watch the sweeps and blocks section to make sure it's sweep. Again, if it's sweeps and blocks mixed, that's fine too. The value is 16.2K. So we're going to look at that size, time, and urgency, right? So that's the size factor. Someone putting $16,000 into a trade is not something we're going to follow. It's just not. Now, if you have a $3,000 account, a $16,000 trade is a huge trade for you. But think in terms of the hedge funds. They have hundreds of millions of dollars. If you have $100 million and you put on a trade for $16,000, do you even recognize that you put $16,000 into a trade? That's like you and me putting a nickel onto a trade. If you lose a nickel, you don't care, right? So if these guys have hundreds of millions of dollars and they're choosing to open a trade for $16,000, what kind of conviction do they have on that? Not much, right? So size, we're looking at this value column to see the size. And the IV of the contracts, we don't really care about that. So you can ignore that whole section immediately. So we've got the time, we've got the exact contract they're trading, we've got the spot price of the underlying when the trade took place, we know exactly how many contracts, what they paid for, it, where in the spread, and whether it was a block or a sweep. That is extremely important information. Now, if you guys are new to flow trading or new to options in general, you look at all this stuff and go, holy crap, wow, I can't even figure out what any of this means. If you've been looking at this screen for, I think at this point, I've been six years of staring at this options flow. We can look at this screen and immediately know, boom, nope, ignore, boom, nope, ignore, boom, nope, ignore. So it's, it's not really a checklist. It's as soon as we see flow, and sometimes it scrolls like this throughout the day, depending on how fast it's moving, we can instantly see whether that's something we're going to follow or not. So if you guys are looking at this, getting confused or saying there's so much information, I promise you it does get easier. Put in the time to really understand what the system is telling us. And I promise you it gets easier. So on the flow class in the Q&A session, sometimes someone says, hey, can you check out XYZ? So I'll type in XYZ, I'll pull up the flow, and within a split second, I go, nope, there's nothing there we would follow. And it's that quick. So we can do it, let's just, let's pull up Netflix. As quickly as I can scan through this information right here, I can instantly say on Friday, there was nothing for Netflix I would have followed. And that took me less than a second of scrolling through all of the flow for Netflix. There's nothing on here that I would follow into a flow trade. It's that simple to see the flow and understand it, whether or not you would follow it into a trade or not. If you're looking at this now and going, holy crap, there's so much information. Again, I promise you it gets easier. Now, we've got all this information from A, A, B, A, B. This one's blank. That's telling us where in the spread these are actually filling. So when you see A like this one, 30 cents, A, that means the ask was 30 cents when this filled. 
0.448 AA. That means 0.448 was above the at. So the spread on this one might have been 40 by 42, and they paid 0.448. So the system is telling me that's above the ask when this order filled. So when we talk about size, time, and urgency, part of the urgent factor is above ask and sweep. Above ask means they paid more for this contract than they needed to. They could have done a limit order and probably get filled at the ask, or maybe even a little bit better, but they were willing to pay above the ask. And think about that. Let's, again, you'll hear me a lot of times say, let's step back and put logic into this. Let's say the spread is a dollar by a dollar twenty, and someone pays a dollar thirty for a contract. The spread is a dollar by a dollar twenty, and they're paying a dollar thirty. Why would they do that? Well, if the spread's a dollar by a dollar twenty, and you don't care about the dollar twenty, you're willing to pay a dollar thirty. That must mean you don't care about the price. You care about making sure you're filled immediately. And if you don't care about what you pay, you just care that I've got to get in this trade and I've got to get in it now. A S A P. No delay. Go go go. I don't care what I fill at. Make sure I get filled. There's an urgency there that you've got to ask yourself, why are they so desperate to throw their money into the market for this position? Now, something like this, this isn't above the ask sweep, so that shows urgency, but it's for $10,800. So that's a trade, even though it's above the ask and sweep, we are not going to follow that. Okay, so yes, above the ask is urgent. Yes, sweep is urgent, but $10,800, Remember, these are people with hundreds of millions of dollars. If they're putting on a $10,000 trade, that is not a high conviction trade. I will have to actually open the seminar from PowerPoint to grab a slide that I want. So maybe later on in the Q&A session, I can do that. I have a slide that shows, it shows a few different lines of options flow. And there's one that stands out. And there's, this is where you might have heard me talk about pieces of the puzzle where ask and bid is one piece of the puzzle. Yellow, white, and purple is one piece of the puzzle. Dollar amount is one piece. Sweets and blocks are one piece. And I basically say, I need all four pieces of that puzzle to be able to see what the picture shows. Okay? You can't tell me this is all yellow flow should you get into the trade. There's no answer to that. You can't say this is all above the ask flow should we get into the trade. There's no answer to that. You've got to be able to put all this information together. So just because this is an above the ask suite, that doesn't mean we run into this contract. It's $10,000. Now this contract could double or triple, we don't know. But as far as the pattern that we're looking for, for high probability trades, we wanna see size, time, and urgency. So this has urgency with the above ask suite, it just doesn't have any significant size that we would follow. One of the common things I get is, hey, I'm struggling with flow, can you help me out? And the first thing I say is send me some of the flow trades that you've taken. And they'll send me the flow. And the first thing I look at is the quality of the flow. And immediately I can say, you know what? You might've made money on that, but there's, there really wasn't a high probability that you would. So a lot of times you'll send me flow and say, you know what? This trade just didn't work out. Can you tell me what I did wrong? And it looks like this. It's 10,000, 12,000, 38,000, 23,000. And you compare that with some of the flow that we push out to the app where it's 200,000, 600,000, 1.8 million. And those aren't single trades, those are back to back to back. And Swan has some examples that he's gonna pull up later on of some of the flow trades that we like and pushed out to the app. And you're gonna see a difference. Let's see if we can, let's see if, I haven't looked at this ahead of time, so this might not be a great example, but let's just see if I can isolate one here. This is the Ford $121, $25 call. And if you look at the dollar amounts here, 11.5, 12, 11, 66, 13, 35, 13, these are not big dollar amounts. Now again, if you follow this flow, it doesn't mean the trade won't work out. But if you're looking at dollar amounts like this, there's a very low probability that this is gonna be a monster trade. And why do I say that? Again, step back, use some logic. If someone really thought Ford was gonna go up, and these contracts were gonna pay out big, would they put $11,000 into these or would they put millions of dollars into these? 
Okay, we're gonna show you examples of the flow that we like, and you're gonna see it's not 11, 11, 10, 11, 16, 20, 33. It's 200, 300, 600, 400, 300, 287, 1.6 million. Boom, 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 boom. So when you see these low dollar amounts, it's a low probability trade. Now you can take this and maybe they go from 67 to $3. So don't come back later on and say, oh, you know, Mike said he wouldn't take this trade and it went from 67 to $3. It absolutely could. But when I'm a full time trader, do I want to put my money into something that might work or do I want to put my money into something that really strong probability that it's going to work? And this just isn't the look. So someone will send me this flow and say, wow, they hit this contract so many times. Boom, 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 boom. And they did, but you've got to look at the dollar amount. These dollar amounts are not inspiring. Now someone's going to say, well, what dollar amounts are you looking for? And unfortunately, this is the hard part about flow trading is I can't give you an answer to that. Okay, so I might enter a trade on $400,000 of flow. I might ignore a trade of $4 million of flow. So again, you can't look at the dollar amount and say, well, that was a lot of money. We should follow this trade. I can show you tons of examples of high dollar flow that we would ignore every single time. And then I can show you some $400,000 and $600,000 trades where we're going to get into immediately. So part of flow trading is, is, is like the title of this says, is really learning how to read the flow. It's not just Roku, 121, 175 call. Okay, I like this trade. I'm going to follow it. There's really more to it than that. And what do you guys notice on this one? It says B. So this filled on the bid. So what does that mean? This is likely a closing position. Yeah, don't, don't, don't buy okay. that. Yeah, don't, don't rush into stuff like this. <laughs> don't buy that. So again, this system is telling us a lot of information. It's telling us where these fill above the ask. So do you think that's an opening or closing order right there? Well, they filled above the ask. So likely that's an opening order. And think about it again, step back, think about it logically. If the spread here is $40 or sorry, 40 cents by 42 cents, and they filled at 44 cents, logically, is there any way that that's a closing transaction? Okay, the spread is 40 by 42, and they filled at 48 or 44. It's early in the morning on the West Coast, so I might say things that are <laughs> not coherent. So the spread is 40 by 42. They paid 44. Is there any way that that was a closing transaction? And when you think logically, no, right? How many times are you going to get higher than the ask when you're trying to close a position? Could it happen? Sure. Likely? No. It's probably one in a billion, one in a million, one in however many. So you've got to look at all the data. You can't just say this is an above the ask sweep, we should get into this trade, right? No, because now the dollar amount's holding us back. You can't just say this is a call for 198,000, should we get into this trade? No, because now the spread is holding us back. So you really need to be able to read the flow and understand everything this is telling us here. There's a lot that goes into it. I do a Thursday class that's basically 100% going into how we use this data probably a little more involved than what we're going to do today. So if you guys want that full class, that's free also. We don't charge you for this stuff. Join the class on Thursday. You can get that by the education up here. Click on class calendar. That's going to pull up a calendar with a bunch of classes on it. You can click the class title to register. If you guys are not members of Blackbox, send me a message on Twitter and I'll get you a link so you can join the Thursday class this week coming up. It's free, even if you're not a member. We offer them to our members, so you won't have access to the class. But if you send me a message on Twitter, I'll get you the link so you can join it, even if you're not a Black Box member for this week. Um, so again, it's, we go into detail that night about how to read all this a little bit better than what we're going to do today, because that class is dedicated to just that. Uh, Swan, what am I missing? What, yeah, what do you want to throw out in yeah. here? Yeah, a couple of questions we've gotten uh, already this morning, and I may have missed it because I was going through these questions, but did we go over the difference between uh, white, yellow, and purple? Okay, so here is the color slide. Hopefully you guys can read this clearly. If not, someone actually go into the question box. Let me know if you guys can see that clearly on your screen. It actually looks a little blurry on mine. So let me know if you guys can read that. If not, I'll go directly to the black box. 
Looks like it's good. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So the colors are just telling now got, us. Now we got 400 people saying they can see it. So thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the colors are just telling us where in relation to open interest these trades are taking place. And that's important. We're going to look at that as part of the data. So when I say this is all yellow, should we follow the flow? Again, that's not enough information. That's one piece of the puzzle. What we need is all the pieces of the puzzle. So this piece is telling me where in relation to open interest has the volume for this day been. So when you see flow that's white like this one, SYMC at the top here, it's white. So what is that telling me? That's telling me the volume on this contract, the day I took this screenshot, has not exceeded the open interest. Okay, so the volume on this contract for today has not exceeded the open interest. When it's purple like this, that's telling me the volume on this contract today has exceeded the open interest. When it's yellow, that means that one single trade by itself was big enough to exceed the open interest. And why do we care? Well, think about, again, step back. Think about it logically. You're going to hear me say that a lot because a lot of what's missing from trading in general, but especially flow trading, is that common sense critical thinking component. So step back, why do we care about open interest? Let's say the open interest on this contract, or let's just pick a random one, XYZ, next week's $20 calls. The open interest is 1,000 contracts. If someone trades 5,000 contracts in one trade, isn't that a significant volume compared to the amount that are open? And wouldn't you look at that and go, wow, there's only a thousand contracts open, but for some reason someone wanted 5,000 contracts today. Okay, so that's something that's part of the story. If you take Teresa's class, you'll hear her say all the time, we're looking for a story. So the volume and the open interest is part of the story. Okay, so a thousand contracts in open interest. Today it's traded 9,000 contracts. That's significant. Now there's more to it than that. You can't just say, well, the volume's 9,000, the OI is 1,000, we should get into this trade. Again, there's more information we need than just that. But let's say the open interest is 1,000 and six contracts have traded today. Is that a trade that you want to get into? Okay, open interest is 1,000, the volume today is six. That's not something we're looking to follow. So this coloring is telling me where in relation to open interest these trades are taking place, and that's going to help me determine the volume relative to open interest. So the white just means open interest hasn't been met, so we should take that off the screen, right? No. There is a filter to remove that from the screen. Do not use it. Now, before I go further, I am going to say there are multiple ways to use the data. There's multiple ways to trade using black box. The way I'm telling you guys in the flow class on Thursdays and the way I'm talking about it today, it's not the only way to use the system. It's the easiest way to start using the system to consistently make profitable trades. Once you're consistently making money, then you can go off and do other things with the data and expand upon how you're gonna use it. So if you take the class on Thursday, you'll hear me say, I don't look at put flow, I don't look at ETF flow. I just don't have them on the screen at all. And it hasn't impacted me as a full-time trader. So you're gonna hear someone else say, well, I, I love looking at ETF flow. It's gonna give me the market sentiment. You're gonna hear me say, I don't even have it on the screen. Okay, so it's not the only way to use the system the way we're talking about it. I want you guys to be consistently profitable using it, and then you can expand upon how you use the data. So for me, I'm gonna say, do not take white flow off the screen. You need to see that. A lot of times what we might see is white, 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 and then a big purple or yellow trade, and that purple or yellow trade might get us into the trade having seen the white flow previously. If you don't have the white flow on your screen, all you're going to see is the one purple trade, which may or may not be big enough, but if we see all the white building into the purple or yellow, that's instantly going to get us into a trade. So don't take the white flow off the screen. The other thing is, since I'm on the topic, the dollar amounts. We have filters for 100,000, 500,000. Do not use those. Again, you're gonna hear other people say, yes, you can use those. If you're new to flow, or if you're not consistently making money, I say to leave those off, because you're going to see more of the data that's gonna get you into the right trades. 
So you don't want to look for just 500,000 and above. You're going to miss a lot of trades. You don't even want to look for 100,000 and above. Now, again, some people will say, yes, use that 100,000 filter. So for now, when you're new to flow trading or if you're struggling to make money, join the Thursday class and I'm going to show you the easiest way to use this. From there, yes, you can expand upon it. Hells is going to come on in a little bit and he's probably going to tell you that he loves the ETF flow. And I'm going to say, I don't even have it on my screen. Who's right and who's wrong? Well, neither one of us are wrong. It's right for me to not have ETFs on the screen. It's right for Hells to look at it. So if you're doing something different from what I say, it doesn't mean you're using it wrong. You're just using it in a way that's right for you. So when I say leave the white flow on the screen, that's me saying in my experience of using flow and in my experience of teaching this and in my experience of getting the DMs from new members who are struggling, leaving the white flow on the screen will help you build the story of what you're about to see. So you're gonna see white, 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 purple, and if you don't have the white flow on the screen, you're missing a large portion of the story. So back to the colors, white just means the volume for the day has not exceeded the open interest. Purple, the volume for the day has exceeded open interest. And yellow, the volume for the day has exceeded open interest in that one single trade. So this one trade by itself was big enough to exceed the open interest. Was that cool. enough explanation, yep. Swan? <laughs> that was it. You guys are going to have to shut me up when I start talking about flow. I can do this all day long. I love this stuff. Yeah, we and trust me, we will stop you. Um, no, just kidding. <laughs> so, Hells, are you on with us now? I thought I saw something. Give him a second. Maybe not quite yet. Okay. He's going to be joining us here shortly. And I'm glad he is joining us because Seven Stars acts absolutely right how seven star uses options flow and how hell's bells uses option flow and how i use option flow are all three different does that mean that any of us are wrong does it mean any of us are always right no it just shows that there's different ways to use that data so when he comes on we'll have him share how he uses it and what he looks for to kind of get an overall market sentiment as he watches it come in so that's going to be good for everybody so okay i'm going to go ahead and take the uh, screen for a second might give you give you a break if that's okay sure all right and there are a bunch of questions there mike if you want to start scrolling through them i think we've there's some that are specifics and i will say this everybody with um over 600 people registered for this thing so I don't think we're going to have time to get into specifics, you know, tickers, um, flow specifically about that. Um, if that might be something that maybe Mike can go over specifically in the flow class, if there's a small sense there'll be such a smaller group um, on Thursday night. But for today, I think we're going to try try to keep it more of an overview and beneficial for everybody as far as information goes. Um, but we do appreciate all the input and the uh, interaction that you guys are having with us over on the question box. So thank you. Um, hey, real quick before you start, there's a few people asking for Twitter. If you go to, if you're looking for me, it's at Seven Star Mike, the number seven. So if you guys want, there's a few people asking for the flow class that are not members of Black Box. At right. Seven Star Mike with the number seven. If you message me there, if you're not a current member of Black Box, I will send you the link to the Thursday class. Again, it's all free. I'm not trying to sell you on the system, but if you want that Thursday class, and you're not a member, it's at Seven Star Mike. Message me there and I'll send you the link for Thursday so you can attend that class with us, which goes into details about the data itself and then how we interpret it. So there Sorry, you go. Swan, I just wanted to get that out there so before That's people good. forget. So, yeah. This is him right here. So you guys can look for at seven, the number seven star Mike. You guys should see that right now, right, Mike? Is my screen showing? Yes. All right. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. So we'll go back to uh, go to Black Box. So what we're going to do now is I just want to go over some examples of flow that we've gotten that come in. Now that Mike's kind of went over the overview of the type of flow we're looking for, that high probability trade flow that we're looking for, just want to go over some examples that have come in over the last week or so 
and give you an idea of how that comes in and why it gets pushed out. We have an app that gets pushed out too. We call them flow plays. Um, and then and especially great for those that work nine to five because not we realize not everybody can just sit here and watch option flow all day long like some of us. So having those flow plays pushed out to the app is really nice because what we're doing is we have people looking at this flow nonstop through the day. And then the best of the best high probability flow that they see then gets pushed out as a notification to everybody. So that's kind of uh, best of both worlds there. So first thing we're gonna look at is uh, some flow that came in a couple days ago on EXPE, okay? So this came in, I'm gonna go down here to the historical side because uh, we can look at historical flow. I'm gonna pull up, um, I'm gonna go back actually from beginning of the year to the 13th, hit apply, and I'm gonna go to EXPE. <clears throat> And it was the June 6, June 17, 190s here. Okay. So you can see this all came in on the 13th, uh, which was last week. Now, do we see the difference immediately on the type of flow we're talking about? Um, look at the sweeps that came in. It started off with $1.1 million sweep above the ask. We've got time on it, so it's out to June. The strike is the 190s, which at this time it's trading. The spot price was 188. So we're basically at the money, barely out of the money in reality. Um, they came in, they bought that morning. You can see some of the volume here and that buying down here. Let me move this back. EXPE is one of those where flow definitely can move the ticker price uh, just because of the, the volume that it typically uh, trades. But you can see here the volume came in in the morning. <clears throat> Spot price actually continued to go down through the day with the market as the market did that day as well. You know what? I'm looking at Fridays. This is actually Friday. This was on the 13th. Let me go back here. Let me get it better. There we go. I was like, something's not adding up here. Here we go. So there we see the buying coming in from the morning. Your screen is still on Twitter, I believe. Really? How's that? There we go. Much All better. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So here is the flow that came in. Now that we now that you guys can see what I'm talking about, here's the flow that came in on that date on the 13th, which was Thursday. Um, started off with that $20 dollar contract. They paid 1.1 million, and were they just kept hitting it that morning. You can see, then they came in with a block of 2.87 million, 1.6 million, uh, another half half a million. Just kept buying, kept buying, kept buying, large dollar amounts. You see the difference between this flow and the flow that Mike was talking about, those $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 uh, transactions. This obviously is eye-catching. And when this comes on the screen, pop, 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 this obviously catches all of our eyes because it's yellow, meaning that open interest is exceeded, with those contracts, with that transaction. We also see them as sweeps. We also see a lot of blocks, but we don't ignore those blocks because there's sweep activity around it. So remember Mike said we ignore solo blocks. So if there was just a single block there for $2 million, we would probably ignore it. But because we have this other activity around it, then all of a sudden becomes of interest to us. So that $1.16 million sweeper is what kicked us all off and then we continue to see buying, buying, buying. How do we know this is buying? Because of the A, they got filled on the ask or the above ask. And you can see the price reacting. Um, as soon as that came out in the morning, the price just continued to climb, went from 180, 1.50 all the way up to almost 190. So just that fast it climbed. Um, so this is the type of flow we're watching. Now, are they still in this trade? I didn't pull up open interest on the uh, brokerage account yet but I think they are because it's out to June, right? They're not planning on jumping out of this. They're not buying premium out to June and jumping out of this, buying here at open and closing it within a half an hour, okay? They're not gonna put $8 million worth of money for a half an hour. They're, they've got something long-term invested here and they're gonna keep an eye on it. So we monitor that open interest. We can go back in and see how many contracts are still open. We follow that big money into the trade and the way we monitor the exit is we see when they get out. Now we can watch them get out 
in the flow because we'll start seeing the same strike, the same expiration coming through in white because the transaction doesn't exceed open interest. And we'll also see it come through on the bid. So white on the bid, those same strikes, those same expirations, sometimes even below bid, lets us know that they're starting to come out of those uh, contracts a little bit. Now, let me give you an example of that. Let's go to some flow that came in. Uh, CCJ was the ticker. I'll get my historical set here. This came in. The initial buy-in was on the 6th, and they started to exit it last week on the 11th. And it was the February 22s. <clears throat> so here was the initial buy-in, right? We see these dollar amounts come in on the 6th. We go back here to the 6th, right there. We saw some buy-in come in on the 6th. Let me change this to the 15 minute. There we go. So they bought in on the 6th. It was in the money at the time. See this, $23 was the spot price. They bought the 22 contracts for February. They started paying at $259.9. Uh, they kept buying, went up to 264. They kept buying, went up to 266. Now, if I change my filter here to show me some of the bids and below bids, because I had only showing me ask and above ask, then what all of a sudden pops on my screen? These are them exiting some of these positions. Why? It's white, which means this transaction did not exceed open interest, so it's contracts coming out of that number, and it comes through on bid and below bid. So if I followed this person into the trade, I'd be very curious on this because now it shows me that they're taking some risk off. Not all of it, because if you add these up, that's about 1,300 contracts. And if you look here, it's about uh, 3,600 contracts, uh, 2,600 contracts, sorry. Um, so they're not taking all of it off, but about half of it. And they basically broke even. When you look at the dollar amounts, right? They filled the 260 to 266. Here they're getting out between 269 and 268. So this is where the flow and how to read it is so beneficial because when you start seeing these bids come through and below bids of those contracts that you're in, you definitely want to take note of it because if you follow that big money in, you also want to follow them out because maybe they're losing conviction in that trade. Let me give you one more example of this. We're going to go to uh, American Express, and this is this was last year. It's just one that we I like to show because it's a, a nice clear picture of entry versus exit. So this happened on in in August. They bought and then they started flipping out of them in on the first. <clears throat> and it was the American Express 1217 170s, right there. Okay, so here we see. Look Look at the date change here, right there between the yellow and the white. See, we went from 8.26 to 9.1. So look at everything below in the yellow, all of this in the yellow. This was all of the buying that took place that day in August. They started buying the 170s uh, for a couple months out at the time. Remember, this is August. They are buying the December contracts. So you can start seeing they feel, started with a block. That first bid block would have been an ignore for us. We did not even going to pay attention to it. Then all of a sudden they started hitting it with some sweeps. Ask, 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 above ask, above ask, ask, above ask. We just, and they just, every dollar amount, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, just kept hitting it, kept hitting it, kept hitting it. Okay. So a lot of us followed that, got in, but you know what? This trade failed. Because look what happened just five days later. They started to exit out of this, and for seven dollars, six dollars, six dollars, six and a half dollars. So they started to get out of it. Look at that block right there, 4.2 million, uh, showing again that they were exiting out of that trade. So they're not always right. Now they may have, you know, if you followed them in, that's why we say take your money when you're happy. Because if we followed them in at the 735 mark, we could have got out for about $100 more here at 840 and been done just to this is that quickly in the same day. So when you're happy, take your money, get out, um, size appropriately. That's the main thing, appropriate size, 
and don't go too heavy into any of these plays because we just never know, okay? Let's look at one more that came in on Friday. Um, Hells, if you're on, just give me a, uh, come on voice and say, hey guys, I'm here. Then I've got, we'll get some information from you too on how you use Flow. Um, let's go to Uber Flow. We'll go to, go, go. Go to the actual active flow, get off of uh, historical here. There we go. <clears throat> and it was the May 2045s. Okay, so immediately when this started flowing in towards the end of the day, this all started, I'm on Eastern time. So this all started just basically 35 minutes before market close on a Friday. You can see how Black Box alerted it and put in a uh, algorithm-based line there. So this is what it alerted at this point at 329 at $41.30. But you can see why the option active alert took place. Look at the options that came in. And this is where it can get a little confusing. And because if you don't know how to read flow, people would look at this and say, oh, well, that's not that's not good flow to follow because there's a bunch of bid side mixed into this. Well, a computer would tell you that that's bearish flow or neutral flow to say the best. But a human eye reads this and looks at these timestamps and says, okay, look at these timestamps over here. This one got filled at 345 on the ask. This one got filled at 345 on the bid. Does that mean that person bought and sold those contracts just that quickly for zero profit? Absolutely not. This happened within four seconds. See that? 324.09, 324.13. Four seconds of time passed. What happens is, as they start buying this activity, when it starts happening around this time frame right there in the 330 mark on the chart, all of a sudden, market makers are like, whoa, what's going on with this contract? There's a bunch of IV coming into it, right? Implied volatility, because there's a bunch of interest now that everybody starts buying these contracts. So the spread of that contract gets a little bit wider. Um, when that happens, this same buyer is coming in and buy, 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 buy. You can just see this all took place from here all the way up to here, all took place in under two minutes. Millions of dollars bought. When that happens, he's going he or she will get filled on some of these opening positions on the bid. Again, a computer would look at that and say, oh, open, close, open, close, close, open, close, because of that bid. But that's just simply not the case. So we look at this flow and we're like, look at what we're looking for. Same strike, the 45s, same expiration. Price of these contracts moving up, 345, 350, 355, 360. See that? That's what we're looking for. Eventually, and the price of these, the premiums on these transactions continues to move, 100,000, 400,000, 1.2 million. That's the type of flow that we're looking for. Now, will this work 100% work out? We don't know. Is it high probability? Yes. Could it fail? Yes. So that's why we go back to appropriate sizing. All right, so there's just some nice examples of flow that we're looking for, how also to notice flow that they're closing out of. Remember we went back and we looked at those white uh, lines and they were B and BB. That's how we can do that, all right? Now I have great news, Hell's Bells is now on with us. Can you hear us, buddy? I can hear you, how are you? Good, good, good. Welcome, welcome. We have got quite a group here, a lot of interaction on the question box side, so we're trying to get to those. But I know uh, you've heard Mike talk about how he uses Flow. Um, I know you use it in a different way. So I'm going to give you, are you ready for this if I give you the screen? I think so. I don't think I have anything to actually up. <laughs> your, mic, your mic is a little muffled, Hell. I don't know if it's too close. Uh, let's see. It's the same setup I have with everything. Is this better or not? Still muffly. It's a little bit muffly for me. Maybe not, maybe it's not. Right. Let me uh, let me close and open and see if that helps.
Better? I think so. If it's not better, I, I can switch from James uh, quickly, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, it's still pretty muffly, everybody's saying. Okay, I'll switch from James. Give me one minute. Yep, that's fine. We, we'll, keep, we'll keep moving. Um, just, just give me a holler when you're back. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so Mike, anything? I yeah, think? why don't I pop in here and give them the checklist while we're waiting? All right, let me uh, make you presenter again. Are you ready for that? Uh, sure, go ahead. All right, it's coming at you. There we go, we see it. All right, so. When I'm talking about high probability trades, this is kind of what I'm looking for here. The thing to keep in mind is that this is a guideline, okay? So one of the things you see on there right over here says we're looking for multi-million dollar flow. It's a guideline. It doesn't have to be multi-million dollars in flow. So this is a starting point for you guys to really pinpoint the types of flow that we're talking about, not all the time, but generally has a very good chance of working out. So time frame, short time frame or continuously pounded all day long. So when I say short time frame, I mean within a three, four, five minute window, they're attacking this contract. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, so within three or four minutes, they just went after this contract 15 times. Again, you gotta ask yourself why, and we don't know why, but what's the meaning behind it? In a really short time frame, they're aggressively trying to throw their money and get filled as much as they can on this contract. That's something we're going to take notice. The other thing, if they're buying something all day long, they're buying it in the morning, at lunchtime, at the end of the day, what is that telling us? Well, that's telling us they're building a large position over time. Those are good signs. Same strike, same expiration. This is important. If they're buying XYZ $20 calls, $30 calls, $28 calls, $16 calls, $18 calls, what does that tell you? Well, that tells you there, there isn't really high conviction on it. They're kind of buying a, a little bit of all over the place. So something may or may not hit. If they buy something 15 times in a row in the same contract, boom, 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 same one every single time. That's what we're looking for. There's a consistency there. There's a very specific trade they're going after. Contract price increasing. That's important. If you show me 17 lines of flow and all 17 times, the contract is $1.20, $1.20, $1.20, $1.20, $1.20. We're not following that. Now, again, that doesn't mean the flow won't work. It just means there's not a high probability that it will. And this is all based on data that I've been compiling over the last two or three years. So that doesn't mean that the contract won't increase in value. It doesn't mean the trade won't work out. What it means is historically, when we've seen something just hit over and over and the contract price doesn't change, historically, those trades don't work out as well or even at all compared to some of the other ones. So we want to see them hit at $1.20, $1.23, $1.29, $1.30, $1.40, $1.48, $1.49, et cetera. So every time they're hitting it, they're driving the price up. And even though the contract price is going up, that's not stopping them from buying. They're still adding to the position. So that's very important there. Ask and above ask and sweeps are showing us the urgency. So remember, size time, and urgency. Those are the three things we're really looking for. No solo blocks. That also means if it's block, 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 we're not going to follow that. We want to see sweeps mixed in there. And again, multi-million, the high probability flow. And again, you're hearing me say this a million times. Step back, remove yourself, look at it from the bigger picture. If they have hundreds of millions of dollars of capital to put into the market to generate a profit for their clients, and they're exposing $20,000 of that capital, is that a high conviction trade? And it just isn't. We have members of Blackbox, and some of you guys that are not members, if you're on Twitter, some of you guys out there can do $20,000 trades. And it doesn't mean you're not a good trader. It just means that these guys that have hundreds of millions of dollars, if they're only putting on a $20,000 trade, it's not high conviction because they have so much capital to use. If they're only using that very tiny bit of it, that's just not a high conviction trade for them. Now, if every box on this checklist is checked, are you going to make money? Well, there's a high probability that you will, but it's not a guarantee. So you cannot hear us say, this is a high probability trade, and then decide to put your entire account into it. 
unfortunately, there was a period where we had like 40 or 50 trades in a row that were just killing it. And people were watching us and they were paying attention, but they weren't following the trades. And then one day they go, oh my God, these guys are killing it. The next time they call out a high probability trade, I've got to get in on this. The next one happened to be some of the best flow we've seen in the history of black box. And it straight tanked from the Netflix. second the big money got into it. That was Netflix. Man, it was I'll something like $40 million dollars of flow. Yep. Okay, so people were watching us make a killing and sitting on the sidelines and they said, oh my God, I can't sit and watch this anymore. I've got to get in the next time they call one out. We had, unfortunately, people that put their entire account into the next trade that we called out. And that was the one out of, and I don't know the numbers offhand, but it was literally something like 40 or 50 trades in a row that just crushed it. And then the one Netflix was the one loss out of 50 trades. And that's the one trade they put their entire account into and they got destroyed. So if every box on this checklist is checked off, you have a high probability of making money. You are not guaranteed to make money. So trade and risk management is vital. You can have every single trade that's a profitable trade that you manage wrong and lose money on every single one of them. Okay, and I've had people send me messages like that. They say, hey, you guys are saying that XYZ made 40% profit. I'm down 60%. And what happens is we're in flow trades. Maybe the same day we're in, those contracts go from $3 to $4.60. But they don't sell because they want it to hit $5. The next day they went from $4.60 to $2.80. And they got in at three. So now they're going, oh man, this trade is a losing trade. Well, no, it wasn't. The trade got you $160 per contract. You just didn't take it. So now that you're sitting at a loss, it doesn't mean the trade or the flow got you into a bad trade. It means you didn't manage it. So you might be sitting at a loss for trades that we took profits on. Now, the biggest question I get, I guess, comes down to where do we exit? And this is the hardest one to answer because if you're a scalper, a day trader, a swing trader, or an investor, you're gonna have four different criteria for exiting trades. Okay, so if I'm a scalper, I might see flow that I like, I get into it and I'm out maybe seven minutes later, maybe 12 minutes later, someone else might get into that trade and sell it the next day. Well, we're gonna have two different results. I might have locked in profits in 12 minutes and they might have twice as much profits the next day. I might have locked in profits in 12 minutes, they might be at a loss the next day. So where to exit, you really have to know your trade style. What I will say, people say all the time is, well, this trade is at a loss, why are you still in it? For me personally, and this doesn't mean it's the right way to trade, it's the right way for me, and I've taken the stats on these and I've watched the flow for years now, this is the way that I have found that works best for me. And again, I'll, I'll tell you guys the, the same thing, step back, take the bigger picture, put some common sense and logic into this. We'll get to that in one second. The rule for me is if I'm in a trade based on the right flow, air quotes, the right flow, I follow flow that's not the best of the best, but I'm gonna manage that differently. So when I see that top tier flow, the best of the best, you've got to get into this trade. If that trade goes red, I just don't care. I don't care if it's 40%, 60% red, I just don't care. As long as the big money stays in the trade, I stay in it with them. Now that rule has had me profiting on trades that other people took a 30 or 40% loss on. That goes back to position size. If you position size most of your accounts into one trade and it's down 40%, you're freaking out. If I'm down 40% on the trade, I just don't care. And let's take the bigger view, the logic, the common sense position. This is what people are missing is the critical thinking components of flow. There's a hedge fund out there. They collected money from their clients. They put it into the market. They have to deliver a return to their clients. They take $6 million and put it into an options position. It's got six months of time. It's down 30%. What is that telling me right now? Well, if they're not closing the position, that means they still believe in the trade. So let's say it goes from 30%, now it's down 40%. They're still in the trade. What is that telling me? That's telling me that it's within their risk profile. They still believe in the trade. They're still holding on to the position. I don't know why they got into the trade. So I can't look at the trade and say, well, you know, they got into the trade because of this and now it's doing this, so I should exit. If they're still in the trade, I'm still in it with them. The amount of times that burned me, 
by saying this trade, is, the, the chart looks horrible, the trade is bad, but the big money stay in it, so I'm going to stay in it with them. The number of times that mentality burned me is four times out of I don't know how many hundreds of trades I've placed with them. Now, that might not be the way you want to trade. So again, if you're a scalper, a swing trader, an investor, you're going to have a different way to exit the trade. For me, I have noticed doing the research on this flow, and for you guys that don't know me, the background on me is I've been with Blackbox for, it's, it's got to be six years now. I say five years, but I've been saying five years for a while, so it's probably six. And Charlie and I looked at the flow a few times and said, how can we really dial this in? And we had it to a really good point. Then we looked at it further and said, you know what, we're still missing on maybe 30% of the trades we're taking. How can we dial it in even further? So I started compiling some stats on it and I started watching the flow religiously. And it's just worked out that a lot of times the big money will enter a position and it's down 30 or 40%. People are closing out for a loss because they're freaking out. Six weeks later, it's up 120%. Okay, so for me, based on how I trade, based on how I've researched the flow, if I'm in the right flow, and remember, this isn't spec flow. This is like top tier, the best of the best. If I'm in that trade, I don't care what it does on any red day. It can be down 30, 40, 60%. I don't care. As long as the big money is in the trade, I stay in with them. You might have to manage that differently depending on your account balance and risk tolerance. But for me, that's the way I've seen that just works the best. And a lot of these trades will go down 30 or 40% and then come back to make monster gains. So when I say I see the right flow, I enter the position. I don't look at a chart to enter a position. The flow itself gets me in a trade. And if you guys follow me on social media, I'm huge on technical analysis. So sometimes it freaks people out to say, well, how are you getting in a trade without even looking at a chart? It's just what I'm comfortable with based on how I know the flow. Okay, so for me, when I see the right type of flow, I'm going to enter the trade immediately when I see the flow. I don't even look at a chart. You're going to hear some people say that they do look at a chart. And again, what's right or wrong? Neither one. What's right for me is what I found that works for me. What's right for someone else might not be, hey, I see the flow, but I want to look at a chart. That might be the way they work. For me, I don't need to do that. The reason I don't need to do that is because if someone exposes 6 million of their capital to the markets right here, right now, well, that's the time I'm going to expose my capital to the same trade as they. Okay? The big money doesn't enter trades based on technical analysis alone. They have a thesis. They have a research team. They have an idea of why. They have information that you and I don't have access to. So if you get into a trade right here, right now, does that mean that the contract is just going to go straight up? No. So some people want to coordinate the flow to the chart, and that's fine. For me, I just don't do that. Because if they chose this point in time to open their position, the chart didn't stop them from doing it right then. The Greeks didn't stop them from doing it right then. And if the chart and the Greeks were so bad that they said, wow, this is going to be tough to make money on this contract, well, they wouldn't expose $6 million of their money to that contract. So for me, the second I recognize good flow, I enter it based on the flow. I don't even look at the chart. Once I'm in the trade, I pull up the chart, I plot support and resistance, and I'm going to watch price action around those resistance levels to see if price action is weakening. If volume picks up, maybe we can punch through a resistance, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, if the trade is red, as long as the big money stays in, I stay in with them. Once the trade is green, it's no longer the big money trade. It's my trade. So once the trade is green, if I exit at 40% gain, and let's say there's three more months of contract, someone might say there's three more months, why are you exiting now? I might like that 40% gain, I might have a resistance level that it's not getting above, so I'm gonna lock that in because that's my personal trade style. That's my trade personality is the shorter term trading. So if I see a resistance that it can't get through, I might close for 40% even though it has three more months of time on it. Someone that doesn't close might make 80% or 100%. And then they might go back and say, oh, well, man, you closed for 40%. I got 80%. Don't you feel like you could have managed it better? And the answer is no, because that's the way I trade. I'm a short-term trader. I'm looking for those quicker gains and putting my capital somewhere else to work. So you have to know your trade style. What's up? Hey, let me – I think Hal's is back. Let me see, because 
that you bring up a great point and that is there's so many different ways to use option flow and different ways of trading and i know hells has a different approach than you do and than i do so hells are you back now with good good i don't know am i am i clear am i good oh much better much better brother All excellent right. very nice very nice so let me uh let me get this presenter over to you because i know you know you do you and bender love to use charts plus flow absolutely so let me give this to you now and you can fill everybody in on how you use it and what you look for all right this is my screen showing we got you yep okay okay so let, let's just break a couple of things down um first off what mike just went through and highlighted was really really amazing um, and, and I think that, that if you're really sitting back and you're thinking about it, it's like, how can I make this tool work for me? You know, th there's so many different ways for it to work for you, depending on your style and what you're looking to accomplish. It's like, it's like, and I know the primary focus on a lot of this, it becomes, okay, options, options, options. But even if you're not an options trader, um, the fact that you know and have a general sense and idea of where the money is pushing, why can't you use comments? Why can't you roll out with comments? Um, it's like they, there's a lot of different ways to use this tool. And I think a lot of people, when they hear about options, especially if they're new to options, they paralyze, right? They're like, oh, I don't know. That's the devil. Um, it's not the devil. But this tool will help you with what you're doing in a, with commons at the same time. It's all about finding out how to use it for you. Now, how do I use it? Okay, I use it a multiple different different ways. I use it like Mike uses it. Um, I use it like Swan uses it. And then I also use it like I use it. So this is how I have my setup, you know, on a daily basis. I'm going to show you exactly what I do when I wake up. I wake up, click on that little options deal image again. Immediately click on studies. I want to see dark pool. That's all I want to see. Okay. For the purposes of today, let's let's do Facebook. Okay, there's Facebook, chart should populate. Okay, now here are my filters that I use. Okay, don't like multi leg, makes me insane. It makes me absolutely insane. I click these two and I click ETF. Okay, that's my setup. So, so set filter over here on the other side, here, filter. The only thing I want popping up here are the, uh, the the flow alerts that come through, and then the dark pools will filter in also. So this is how I'm looking at the system every minute of every day. So not only do I get a, a good look at the options, but I get a good look at the uh, at the dark pools that are filtering through also. So now let's flip it back. Let's go all all. This center panel right here. This flow. Let's scroll down. Look at all this. Look at this. Look at all that greatness. Look at all that capture of where the monies are going. Look at it. It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. So what I like to do, you know, one of the, the tools that I use Flow for is I have found that the market will tell you whether or not it's happy, sad, grumpy, ecstatic having a bad day, a bad week, a bad month, whatever you want, depending on how this flow is coming through. There's days when there's a certain pantameter, a certain move with the flow to where it's coming in, it's coming in, it's coming in. You can feel it. You can feel bull. You, you can look down the page and there, there will be moments in time when you have nothing but call. Look at this right in through here. Look at this little segment of time. Okay. We had bull go on a run. Bull went on a run. I mean, if you look at the timestamp on it, when did Bull go on a run? Bull went on a run in the last two minutes of the day on Friday. Kind of dope. You can see that. You can see how money came into reposition in the last couple of minutes of the day. You could also see the turn when we had in the market in general, how the flow also changed at that point in time in the day. So how do I necessarily use flow? I'm sitting here going, I'm looking, okay, I will call out, okay, AMD, NVIDIA, bits I puts. They like just sit there out loud to myself, Tesla, that's a nice little manga right there. Next week, 1050s, 400K. We'll take that. We'll roll out. Again, repeat on the 1050s. This is, this is somebody with, with the, his $2,400. He's like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to ride homeboys <laughs> coattails here with the 400K. It's like, let's giddy up. That This is how I use flow. 
I call out multiple lines of flow, flow during the day. And it's not necessarily for it to be immediately actionable. It's there's certain lines that are popping up in repetition that, that become more like, hey, let's check a chart, okay? Then at that point, I'll say, hey, Bender, hey, Zeus, hey, somebody, where are we sitting on that chart? How are we looking with this flow? How is it positioned, okay? This is really, really interesting when you see, and I like to use it in a lot of ways, a rash of bid side puts. Um, I think that, that that's something that's really, really telling in a lot of ways that flow is talking to you, right? So you can have something that that is literally a short target, okay? And they're just pounding it with puts, 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 constantly for a week, two weeks, whatever. And then slowly but surely, you start saying, okay, they're coming down the bid. They're closing out of their, their puts. And then maybe they're, they're writing puts. Maybe they're doing something along those lines. That gives me an idea. It's like, okay, let's check this chart. Let's get a feel for what's going on. Let's get an understanding for how this thing is behaving. And because I look at every line of flow that's coming through, I have a pretty good feel. Like, like if you, somebody were to shout at a ticker, I could be like, oh, yeah, no, they're they're bearish here. No, they're bullish here. No, you know, it's mixed to neutral. You know, is that kind of stuff. It gives you the ability to listen to the heartbeat of the market. It gives you the ability to listen to the heartbeat of a sector. I can't think of anything more absolutely powerful than a tool that allows you to take a, what do they call it, a stethoscope? Or what are, is that down yeah, your throat? there you go. Which mm -hmm. one's on your heart? Stethoscope, <laughs> got it. it. It allows you to literally take a stethoscope and place it on the heart of Wall Street and listen. You're listening. You can feel it. You can see it. And on some days, you can actually taste it. This is the power of black box. This is the power of flow. Now, how, how do we use it? And, and I, I say we because it, it's not a me thing. Um, when it comes to, to the work that, that we do in the Roadhouse, it's a very, very, you know, team oriented type thing. I call flow and I have some really, really amazing individuals that I trust with their charts, you know, emphatically as far as understanding. It's like, do we want to hit this here or do we want to let it develop? Do we want to let this develop? Because if, and, and I think Mike used a good example with, with like, I don't know, what was it Netflix? Let's just call it Netflix. $6 million in flow came in, okay? They're going out three, four, five months, okay? Do I have to take that contract that they're taking right then and right there? No. No, because I'm going to guess that between now and the next four months, we might have a red day. We might have a day to where I can actually get in with better leverage and better sizing than what they did with their contract and their play. So it's a name that I keep in the back of my head. It's a name that I write down. And it's like, you know what? That would be a really great scoop if Netflix dips down, let's say 510 or 540 or what, whatever the number is. If we can get it there, knowing that that money is in there, that they're in it and that they're going to continue to push it and they're not going to let their $6 million die on the vine. Knowing that, that gives me additional confidence with chart and flow to say, you know what, let's go ahead and hit that. Let's get that. And it, I think in a lot of ways, there's a level of, of, of consensus at how we like to operate as far as using the chart, using the flow, using the narrative all together, especially when it comes to dissecting sector, as far as being like, you know what, that just makes sense. It makes sense that money would be rotating into this sector and these names at this point. That's how we like to use flow. That's how I specifically love using flow. I want to know, I want to have a good idea of what the health of the market is, the health of the sectors are, where the money is going right down to the individual ticker. And the only way that I can accomplish that is something that makes the majority of people absolutely insane. And that's by watching and feeling and tasting every single line of flow that comes through the pipe. Was that clear, Swan? Did, was that a beautiful. good? Okay. Absolutely beautiful. I, I kid around with hells all the time because uh, I I listen into the Roadhouse quite a bit because in my secular job, I do a lot of driving and I can't obviously be watching flow. And I love that hells calls out flow line by line as it comes in through the day. And I tease him because when we start seeing bullish flow come in, he's, I can tell in his voice, he gets excited 
and it makes me want to drive faster. And he <laughs> says that I can't. He says I can't blame him when the police pull me over, but. Um, Correct. It's like all in a horse race. I love it. <laughs> the, the hell's maybe do it will not hold up in a court of law. I can tell you that. <laughs> no, I love it. I love what you guys do down there in the roadhouse. And I like what I really like is when he talks about the, the team effort there, they truly do have that. But the combination of using charts with the flow uh, just adds a whole nother uh, layer of the money, you know, the money flow that we see. and um you know you bringing up that those last two minutes on friday and how you can really just get a, a sense of the direction it's amazing how when you know when we see this flow coming in you're right we see puts on the ask all these puts opening up spy qqq responding accordingly and then all of a sudden we see those being on the bid the calls start coming in spy and qq responding accordingly and we definitely see that direction. I love great, good analogy on uh, the heartbeat. I like that. No, it, it really is because it's like if if you think about it, that there were last week was a pretty. I think we all agree last week was pretty rocky, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. like it was like oh man, this is a <laughs> this is a special kind of week for sure. Um, it became interesting because you know when the market is 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 happy and feeling really healthy you'll get that run of bid side puts coming right it's like it's like you'll get to a certain level of support you know as they're they're trying to beat the crap out of the market you'll it'll come down to a certain level of support and it's like obviously everybody's looking at the same lines they're like okay i need to cover we're covering we're covering here we're not going to be the last one out so cover 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 and if you're in a healthy market, as you're getting covering, you're getting call buying coming in beside it. That exacerbates the upward move and upward pressure to really, really get up and going. It's it's like rocket fuel at that point. It's yeah. like it's like puts getting out, shorts getting out, or the writing of puts alongside call flow. It's like bang, let's go. Now, what we have not seen, and it's been a while, we have not seen a level of covering and call flow coming in at the exact same time. It's been a minute. It's been a, a little while since we've had that. It's been a little while since it's been like, these guys are literally fist fighting themselves to get their cash in right now. They want it in now, they don't care. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen that. So it's saying that the market, basically what that means is the market's a little bit timid now, right? But we already knew that because we could see it on flow. Don't need to look at a chart. Don't yeah. need to, it's like, I don't need to look sometimes, and, and literally I spend the majority of my time looking at flow as opposed to charts. I, I rely on my teammates for that. Um, but when it comes to, to the flow, it's like, there's times that, that I, I can look at the flow and be like, man, they're coming with a stick. They're coming with a stick. Let's, let's see how much they're able to get. They're coming with a stick means is like, we're, we're coming up to an area to where Bear feels comfortable whopping in with puts. I see calls coming in on the bid followed up with puts coming in at the same time. They're coming with the stick. They're going to get 30, 40, 50 cents off a of spy. Damn near guaranteed. Damn yeah. near guaranteed. They're going to get that. Now, can that, ex can that capitulate down? Can that force more downward pressure if people are like, well, hey, you know, then you can get a pile on effect. Flow is the, is the exact same way, moving up and moving down. It is a very, very powerful tool. Very mm -hmm. powerful. Now, you combine that with things like dark pools, which again, we're talking about black box and, and flow. So let's talk about how some of these dark pools come in. Everybody want, wants to know, okay, is this dark pool, is it a buy or a sell? Is it a buy or a sell? I don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> you don't know. Ask Mel. <laughs> Even ask Mel. She's just like, please stop asking me your dumb question. It's like it's like nobody knows. Okay. But what do we know? Okay. We know that it is a line of interest. It is an area of interest on the chart. That's what we do know. We know that. So if we go and we look at, and I, again, I have, okay, so I have XBI pulled up. Let's get the face page pulled up. By the way, Bender killed XBI on Friday. He absolutely Yeah, he sure did. It. Beautiful, beautiful entry on that. It's like the dude, it's like his charts, man. It's all I can say. All I can say. Okay, so 
So if, if we're sitting here, we're, we're, we're looking at, at Facebook right now, right? So this is this is a two-day look as far as where some of the most recent dark pools have come in over the last couple of days. This was after hours. You could see this one down here at the bottom, okay, that, that came in. And you can see these areas of interest all throughout to where if I'm trading it, and it's like even look if you pull up you pull up like a five day it's like all these dark pools are sending underneath and relatively speaking facebook was extraordinarily strong on friday and and used a lot of these dark pools to bounce up and play around as support they can also be used as resistance if you turn around and you look at the dark pool action on friday with apple same thing but mm -hmm. if you take the the culmination of all of the data all of the information you have a real good idea of where the areas of interest are. You can check and see where the flow is coming in and how it's coming in on the, on the chart. It's like, what, what did we get down and through here on Facebook? I don't know. Did we get a bunch of bid side puts and some call buying on right in through here on this little area? Did we? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I would, I'm going to go ahead and make a guess that we did. Um, again, these are the, the ways that if you're looking for a macro view of the market and then being able to kind of scope all the way down it. Imagine like, like a big, like the Hubble telescope, right? Okay. If you want to choose to set your filter and lens Hubble telescope, cool. You can do that. You can totally do that. You want to go ahead and drill in, in the smallest to the smallest, you know, microscopic atom type feature, the or little, I don't know, little cell thingy majig it. You can do that too. You can do that. And I'm sure Swan covered out, you know, how to do it to, to where it's just your watch list um, to where you're just like, you know what? I don't want to hear the noise. I don't care to hear the noise in any capacity. I want to drill down. I want to watch Facebook. I want to watch Amazon and I want to watch AMD. That's all I want to see. I don't care. Let the world burn around it. That's all I want to see. You can do that. You can do that. And these are some of the things and tools that are available. And it's like, look, it's like there was a day, what was it, a couple of weeks ago where the site was down for like, like what was it, like 12 minutes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Felt like forever, yeah. but yeah. And I wanted to lay, and I, I couldn't, I was just like, I, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable trading. I don't feel comfortable getting in or, or getting out of anything. I just don't. I was blind. I was blind. I have become so reliant upon this system that I don't believe that I would feel comfortable trading with any size or conviction without it. I don't think that I would be able to. No, obviously you adapt, you figure it out. But yeah. for me, this platform, these tools, when used properly, are absolutely powerful. And I want to circle back to one more thing. A lot of people, you know, it's like, we'll get an alert that comes in, right? And everybody's like, oh, man, they just dropped like eight million billion dollars into Amazon. Woo, let's do it. Let's do it. Everybody's buying that big old green candle. That big old monstrous green candle with all that juice flying through it, pumping up the value. That straight vertical green candle. Okay? They buy in. They're like, oh, man, I'm up 10%. I'm up 20%. Blah, blah, blah. You know what? That green candle is going to consolidate, right? That green candle might have, you know, a, a 50% retracement of its initial spike, which again is healthy for it to do. You're like, oh man, I'm down like 30%. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what happened? <laughs> why, why, why did this happen? What? Look. If you know that they just dumped eight million dollars into whatever, they're not taking it out in the next five minutes. You can go ahead and rest assured you're going to get a red candle <laughs> over the next month or so that's going to allow you to really maximize that trade, to really do it. And it's and it's really about getting an understanding of where is the money going, where is it going, how are we rotating. It's like, is it is it just, let's say, Facebook that, that's getting money right, right now and they're leaving, the, you know, other thing alone? Is it like, oh, man, it's like, or, or I'm sitting here looking and it's just like, it's like, why, why are they buying airlines and 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and wh- wh- why are why it's like casinos why, and airlines and hotels. Yeah. And, airlines, and why are they buying out to June and July? It's like it's like well, and in a lot of ways, big money is basically saying it's like there's a good chance we're going to be roaming about the cabin having a grand time by summertime. That's where big money is. What big money is saying. That's the shot that they're calling. Now, now let's flip that around and get an understanding. It's like, why are they buying this flow here and now? You can go back and pull up some of these charts, like like your your Delta Airlines and your uh, Hiltons and your and some of these. Some of these are in very interesting spots on the chart. It's like it, they just are. And then it becomes an understanding, trying to figure out, okay, so what are we trying to do? It's like airlines we know are eventually going to come back and be fully operational and everything's going to be great you know whether it be six months eight months a year whatever it may be we know that it will we know that it's going to happen and the market is a forward-looking instrument the market is always going to take gambles in some capacity regarding what the future may hold that works both ways you can see a risk off it's like you see that within the conversation of the fed right now you see very lackluster flow into tech you can see it mark's telling you it's telling you yep. if you if you've been and at the same time this is this is one more thing that i want to put out there if you're sitting there trading these these stocks that in 2021 were, were the were the mean bandits let's call it if you're sitting there trading amc gme um d-dog um, I'll throw NVIDIA in there also. Um, we can throw in uh, uh, AFRM. We can throw that one in there also. Dash Airbnb. Dash Airbnb. This is You can say with absolute certainty that Bull has left the building. If you go back and look at that, that move down on D-Dog, that move down on NVIDIA, that move down that, that, that we're seeing... Uh, now on the uh, on on the ape stocks, the the GME and the AMC, the move down. I think it said D Dog. The move down on a firm was was brilliant because you saw it coming. Everybody was sitting there looking at you. Had one player coming in there and be like, "I'm dropping 8.7 quadrillion dollars to the upside on on a firm." There's like one cat, one dude over there just banging the drum. He's gotten hosed. Now, can it come back? He's can it come back for him? Sure. Maybe, but he's going to have to double down on his bet. And that's the other thing that you can look for. And I think Mike brought it up, and I know you brought it up before, Swan. You'll get these grand lines into things like Swan, right? Not Swan, but uh, um, what well, Snow. I think Snow was one. Yeah, um, no, r- yep. recently you, you'll you'll see it you'll see it happen you'll see lines of flow coming to a lot of different Hilton we've seen it a billion different times okay and you know it's there's a pullback right but they're staying in they're staying in at that point at certain levels of the chart depending on their time frame that they have they're going to make a decision do I cut this position and redeploy the capital someplace else which happens whale bails okay that does happen. Or am I going to go ahead and double down and play giddy up? A yep. lot of this big money flow, they come back into. And if you got into it to, let's say, for example, you get into a trade because of flow, okay? You take the whooping that, that, that they're taking while they're staying in. They come back in and double down and you don't, they're going to win and you're not. You're going to be fighting to break back to even. Good point. As as opposed to maximizing the deal. If you use flow, you cannot be hypocritical in the standpoint to where you use it. You have to look at everything. And I think what a lot of people do sometimes, they only see what they want to see and they don't see the big picture. And you can't do that. You have to be an honest broker. You have to understand what's going on. The most powerful trades that we have put on have been when three things come together. When you get flow, the narrative jives, and the chart calls for it. You can move with confidence. You can move with real confidence on those. Is this helpful? Did somebody want to cut me off and say some words? <laughs> no, you're doing good. I really appreciate that um, because um, you're right. That's the thing. It's if when, when used properly, 
And that's why we called this webinar how to read flow or how to learn to read flow properly because there's so much let me take the screen back from you hells yeah, um take let's see i think this is me there's so much flow out there that people don't know how to read it they start putting their own narrative on it and when that starts happening then they're getting into trades they shouldn't they have no business being in and we say it all the time the flow tells us the story. Don't try to write the story yourself. Um, you know, when you when you buy a book, you expect it to have an introduction, uh, the body of the book, and then also its own conclusion. <laughs> the, the writer doesn't expect you to, to create one of those three. Um, same thing with option flow. If you're saying, well, I think this is good flow, um, then the answer is no, it's probably not. It should be obvious to us when we start getting into it, and it should be obvious to us when the when to get out as well. So excellent point. I love the way you guys use flow down the roadhouse. Um, keep up the great work, you and Bender and the team. You guys are doing awesome. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. All, All right, right. So am, am I done? Did I, did I do my contributions? <laughs> hey, you're more. We're going to wrap this up here in the next five to right ten on. minutes anyway. So you can. All right, buddy. Hey, man. Seriously, Swan. Th thank you for having me, man. I appreciate yeah, it. I really appreciate uh, you joining us. Thank you so much. Anytime, pal. We'll see you soon. All right. We'll talk later. Okay. Um, let me look at something here. I wanted to pull up the because I had a couple people ask about the snowflake and Hell's mentioned this. Um, let me see what's going on with my filters here. We go here. All right. So some people are asking about that, how you can tell if a big money has rolled out of a contract into another. And I'll quickly show you guys this. We do have that information here. So note the date change up here where it says 1231 up here to January 3rd. So on December 31st, we saw all of this buying come into snow and multi-millions dollars worth, millions and millions if you add that all up, okay? So that all happened on the uh, last day of the year. They were buying into the 370 calls for March. Then in January on the 3rd, we saw a big 16 million or nine and a half million dollar sell of that contract. At the same time, they bought the 350. So that's what we would call a roll down, right? They lost money on this. They paid 22 something. Now they're down to 16. And so they lost money. They rolled into the 330 or the 350s. Paid 13 and a half million into it. Then date change come down here to the third now we're here on the fifth and they rolled into the 330s we see that because here they sold the 350s there we go they sold the 350s click accidentally clicked there sorry um let me get back up to where we were right here they sold the 350s 11 on the bid and they bought the 330s, 6,000 contracts. See how this is the same contract size? Sell, buy, sell, buy. So then they rolled into the 330s. Then we started to see some of those 330s being sold off uh, a little bit, not many of them, but they're starting to sell off a little bit. But this has been pretty much a losing trade, I think, for this buyer. Uh, originally 15, 16 million dollars in and not doing much with it at this point. So that's how you can see some rolls that are done. Um, it's using that multi-leg, which we won't get into much detail, but uh, that answers a lot of the questions we've gotten in on that segment. All right, Mike, final comments. Let's uh, try to wrap this up in the next five to ten minutes. What do you What do you got for us? So, kind of piggybacking on what Hell said is with the market sentiment. What's the main reason we're using options flow? So, what we're seeing is the hedge funds that have hundreds of millions of dollars. They have research teams that probably have a budget way more than we can even imagine. And they have probably information that you and I just don't have access to. Okay, so these are the people that have the ability to move the market. That's why we're following them. When we see dark pool information come in, no, we don't know if it's a buy or a sell, but what we do know is that that's a level these guys are transacting at. 
So then we're going to watch over time. You don't know in three or five minutes or the next day sometimes. And again, step back, look at the big picture. How do hedge funds trade? Well, if they're putting on an, a common share position, do they buy a position and just sit there? No, they buy and buy and buy over time right? They're not going to just do one transaction to open their position. They might be buying a position over the course of months. They might be closing a position over the course of months. So the dark pool information, the options flow, what all this information is telling us is how are these multi-billionaires choosing to spend their money, right? Their job is to take money from clients, put it into the market, generate a return, and bring profits to their clients, okay? They don't do this and lose money often. They will lose money. We've had high probability trades that lose. That's why we talk about trade management and risk management. But over the long run, they don't do this often and lose money. So what we're really doing is watching, and this is why it's called the smart money, we're watching the smart money, these people that have hundreds of millions of dollars and use that money to make hundreds of millions more. We're using the options flow. We're using the dark pool to see how they're opening and closing their positions. And just, I don't know, don't you guys think maybe that's a good amount of information to have? These are the pros. This is what they do for a living. They make ungodly amounts of money. When you watch these documentaries on Wall Street about how they make, you know, $50 million bonus for the year, they know what they're doing. We want to follow them. So options flow and dark pool information, it's giving us the bird's eye view of what these big dogs are doing. What are they doing? How are they doing it? And then it's just us, up to us to figure out, is it the right pattern? And if it is the right pattern, follow them into doing what they're doing. They're smarter than I am. I'm not going to figure out the market any better than someone that has a million dollar budget at JP Morgan, right? Goldman Sachs. These guys, they have all the money in the world, all the equipment in the world, all the knowledge in the world. I am not going to be smarter or better than they are. So I'm just going to use their information, how they position them and their money, and I'm just going to follow them into the trade. So that's options flow and dark pool in a nutshell. We're Thank following you, big money because they're smarter than us. That's it. That's it. That is it. We get to be a fly on the wall on some of the biggest accounts in the world and get to see what they're buying. That's exactly why we love it. All right. Hey, everybody. We want to thank you so much for taking time out of your holiday, your day off, to be with us today. Hopefully, this answered some questions. Uh, just a few points there were just a few housekeeping things to, to keep in mind. Um, you got Seven Star, you got Swan, and we have Hell's Bells on today. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, and hopefully you give us a follow if you haven't already. The main thing we wanted to make sure is that you are all understanding option flow properly. There's too many services out there that give you option flow, but there's no education that goes with it. We want to make sure that you guys know with with black box that's what we're here for we have live moderators talking through option flow every day and we're happy to assist uh, and answer questions throughout the day for you um, again thank you for your time have a great rest of your day enjoy the week and stay green and we will talk to you soon thanks everybody